Video game narratives have the advantage of letting you actively explore an entire world. Well, if something isn't expressed in dialogue or the main thread, there are endless chances to add a pointer or two somewhere else. Chances are that former plot hole was considered by the devs at some point, they just didn't have the time to render new cutscenes, get the voice actors back in, or develop anything other than a tiny game asset to solve the problem. That doesn't mean, though, that the explanations aren't there. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are seven plot holes easily answered in their video games. Number seven, no one identified that Makarov led the airport attack. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2's controversial No Russian mission is not only polarizing due to the player performing the terrorist attack themselves, but also because many have pointed out a glaring plot hole that threatens to collapse the entire narrative. See, Makarov's goal is to make Russia believe the attack in the airport is done by the Americans, and he reminds his comrades not to speak any Russian so as to not arouse suspicion. He then kills the lone American in his team so they find the body of a US citizen that supports the notion America performed the attack. The problem that arises is that Makarov is already a very well-known Russian terrorist during the events of the game, and he does the attack entirely without his face covered. The fact the Russian government would instantly blame the attack on America and start World War III when Makarov is the one doing it seemed completely far-fetched. The answer to this, though, is fairly simple. In Makarov's safe house, you can actually find a newspaper clipping that explains the Russian government knew and accepted that Makarov carried out the attack. What they placed blame on was the US supplying Makarov with the arms he he needed, believing America helped him plan it. Number six, the existence of puzzles doesn't make any sense. Resident Evil. As amazing as the Resident Evil series is, the biggest gripe some players have is from believability. Literally, people in reality don't have extravagant puzzles strewn throughout their houses. In the first game then, the Spencer Mansion is a cavalcade of increasingly complex riddles and fetch quests. There are entire rooms of the mansion devoted to a single puzzle that will gift you something to aid in another. No one in their right mind would have this system in their home, and it completely ruins the immersion for some people when a ceiling lowering to crush you is accepted as normal. In reality though, check out the game's lore and it'll tell you exactly why so much of the environment is designed this way. You can find an entire backstory through journals in-game that explain the puzzles were designed by famed architect Gregor Trevor, who the Spencer family greatly admired. Gregor's gimmick was creating all sorts of grandiose brain teasers for the very rich in a variety of buildings and even a cruise ship. The Spencers had paid him to design the house in whatever manner he desired, and in other games the company he owned was hired to build more contraptions. Resident Evil 7 even contains a receipt for contractor services, noting that a bird puzzle was asked to be put together. Number 5. No one uses a phoenix down to save Aerith. Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy VII's shocking death of Flower Girl Aerith still haunts millions of broken hearts to this day, but many who got through the ordeal of watching Sephiroth murder her always have the same question. Why didn't the party just use a Phoenix Down Resurrection Potion to bring her back? In Final Fantasy VII, characters can be shocked, burned, sliced, or even hit with a meteor before being downed. All it takes is one whiff of a Phoenix Down though, and they suddenly spring back to life. If they could go through all that and keep ticking after applying one, then it stands to reason Aerith should have also been able to after just one stab of a sword. Well, the game explains if you check the text description that a phoenix down helps revive people who are knocked out, not resurrect them from the dead. Because Aerith had a fatal wound and died, the potion would have been completely wasted. All those times in battle, no matter how much of a stretch of the imagination it might be, our heroes are merely unconscious before being revived. Number 4. Jack Couldn't Have Lived Outside Rapture Bioshock We learn in Bioshock that our protagonist Jack was actually an infant used in a variety of growth hormone experiments and was sent away at the age of 2 when he had the appearance of a young man to live out his entire life then come back to the underwater city of Rapture at the right moment. Instantly, you begin to question how the hell a two-year-old managed to survive the world outside Rapture when he's not had the combined 20 years of experience that the rest of us need to be a functioning adult. Well, in one of the audio logs in the game, you can find an answer to this particularly crazy plot point. Dr. Sushong, who was responsible for growing Jack, explains that he used advanced mind control to imprint everything along the way. This included a faked backstory of where Jack was from, his entire life, and also the ability to control him with the phrase, would you kindly. The game explained that he had his memories imprinted, so it stands to reason he had all the knowledge and skills implanted too. Jack's billionaire parents only needed to pay someone to give him a job on the outside that fits these various parameters, and he was all set. Number 3. Kratos Could Easily Go Back in Time and Save His Family 
God of War 2. Kratos' entire personality is rage and revenge personified, driven mad enough to kill his own wife and daughter, then going after those responsible. In the second outing of the original set of games, he manages to defeat Clotho and grasp the power of the Loom of Fate, allowing time travel. This then begged the question from fans of why Kratos didn't just use this incredible power to go back and save his family. He would have them back and not need to go on this epic quest of vengeance at all. Well, if you analyze your options in these scenes, choose an event that isn't what the game or fate needs you to pick, and the Mirror of Destiny cracks, meaning Kratos can't jump back to that time. Overall, this implies that he simply can't just hop to any time period. Conspiracy theorists will no doubt attempt to cover for this and blame the game's mechanics, but if you dig deeper into the lore, you'll find that a person's thread also breaks upon death. Therefore, Kratos would need to find his family's threads that snapped off wherever they may be now to go back at all. Both scenarios risk the grandfather paradox regardless, as we know the God of War's version of time travel involves a duplicate version of yourself showing up, rather than anything based in a consciousness traveling between bodies. This means Kratos would have to kill his younger self, no doubt making his presence self disappear. Number 2. Why didn't Sadler just let Leon and Ashley go? Resident Evil 4 The villain of Resident Evil 4, Sadler, wants to infect the US president's daughter with his last plague as parasite to manipulate the president. When Leon S. Kennedy finds her, she's already infected, so fans question why the leader didn't just let them leave the island and the rest of the plan play out. Instead, Sadler does everything in his power to ensure the pair don't escape, and that leads to his downfall. Why he didn't just let Leon and Ashley go home to complete this plan, being the parasite would be in them anyway, seems like a massive issue. On the contrary, Sadler explains he needs the funds from the president's ransom to keep his cult going, and tells us he needs a lot of money to run a religion. If Leon managed to sneak Ashley off the island, Sadler would have no bargaining power and not get the cash he needed. If that wasn't enough, the parasite inside Leon and Ashley didn't have full control over them yet. Leon already had pills to slow their growth, so there was a chance if they escaped, they could have had the parasites removed. Sadler wasn't being a fool. He was just trying to secure long-term victory. And number one, Songbird isn't explained. Bioshock Infinite. What makes Bioshock's world so engrossing is the impressive attention to detail seeping out of every pore across every single game. Even the machines that allow the player to resurrect have a detailed explanation if you really want to know how it works. Enemies in the game, despite how goofy they may seem, all have a reliable purpose in the narrative. For example, the hulking handyman in Bioshock Infinite came about as a way to help terminally ill people survive in giant cyborg bodies. However, one of the main elements of the story doesn't seem to have any explanation beyond being a big threat made to protect Elizabeth. Songbird just comes out of nowhere, seems to only want to protect this character, and destroys massive sections of Columbia before disappearing. Considering Bioshock Infinite's development hell, it feels like an entire part of the story was just left out. Songbird's explanation, though, can be found hidden away on a voxophone. When you play, it's explained that Songbird is actually the result of Jeremiah Fink finding the designs for the first game's big daddies through a tear in time and then experimenting to create his own beast. Fink struggled to force the Songbird to bond with something to protect, like the Big Daddies did with their little sisters, until Songbird crashed into Elizabeth's tower and a bond was cemented. All round a touching story, but one you'll completely miss if you don't find this one audio diary. And those are just seven plot holes easily answered inside their video games. Let me know your favorites down in the comments below, and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.